Hello everybody and welcome to This Week in Astrology with your friend Gretchen Heidel, full-time astrologer, life coach, Reiki master, and so much more. And I am here on our Monday night, night June 19th, 2023, Juneteenth. Um, and if you are just joining me live on Facebook, welcome, welcome. And I'm also co-recording for YouTube at the same time, two different cameras. So I'm looking up and I'm looking down and that's why. So if you're just joining me live, welcome. I appreciate you coming and tuning into the live broadcast. Uh, it is Monday night and we have a bunch of things to go over this week, or I should say, I have a bunch of things to go over this week in astrology. There's a lot of things happening happening including the summer solstice that's right we are headed into summer season yay <laughs> i had to wear my summery like shirt today because i you know we're celebrating summer coming so uh welcome everybody who is just joining go ahead and post your astrological sign below and where are you tuning in from city, state, country, whatever. Uh, welcome to all who are joining. Uh, we had a big astrological thing actually happen today, but when I say today, it's going to be active all week, and that's where Jupiter formed a sextile with Saturn today. So that was on Monday. Jupiter uh, doing the uh, <laughs> highlighting Saturn, that was a big, huge deal. And actually, out of the entire month of June, uh, Jupiter is going to be, uh, Jupiter sextile Saturn is the biggest planetary transit this month. So welcome planetary, um, aspect, I should say. Um, there's a lot going on this week, so I'm just waiting for some people to join. Andrea, hello, Aries in the house <laughs> from Vermont. Terry, welcome, Aquarius in the house from New York. Kelly, also in the house from New York, Leo pre-birthday coming. We're almost, we're, we haven't quite gotten into cancer season yet, but we're, it's coming. Melinda. Hello, Melinda. Capricorn Sun, also in Vermont. Welcome. Uh, so we have the Northeast being represented here. Jackie. Hello, Libra living in Pennsylvania. Welcome. <laughs> we got, we got some, we got some, uh, people in the house. And so, yes. And go ahead and comment. If you, if you know anybody that wants to watch the broadcast, go ahead and tag them in the show notes and they will know that I am live and that there's a bunch of things going on. Debbie Aries in Florida, welcome. Uh, good to hear from you and see you here uh, tonight. So like I said, we have this Jupiter sextile Saturn thing happening today. The peak of it was today, but it's going to be active all week. We have the summer solstice uh, also occurring. And then we have some other I guess you would consider the minor sort of planetary things. We have a lot of asteroids on the move. I'm not going to cover all the asteroids in this broadcast because it's so much. And I think you guys would be like, oh my God, information overload if I covered all the asteroids. But we do have a lot of planetary stuff happening. So it's kind of a busy week, astrologically speaking. <clears throat> So Jupiter, I'm going to go over first. I'm going to just dive in on Monday, June 19th, 2023, Juneteenth. Uh, Jupiter formed a sextile to Saturn. And so uh, that is a big, huge planetary thing. If you guys saw my broadcast last week, I did cover that last week a little bit, but I'm just going to kind of review that. Um, that doesn't happen very frequently, okay? Uh, the last time was actually 2017. So Jupiter um, in Taurus forming a sextile with Saturn, and by the way, this is happening at seven degrees Taurus, and then Saturn's at seven degrees Pisces. And it's so it's kind of in the beginning-ish uh, of both Taurus and Pisces. And so basically what's happening is um, this is a big, uh, planetary transit that's lasting for several weeks and the peak of it was today on Monday at 11:53 a.m. Eastern time so earlier than that if you're on the West Coast or you can always adjust for your time zone wherever you're viewing from uh, but basically that's what the peak of it is but remember this is like climbing Mount Everest right so it takes a while to climb up the top of the mountain the peak is 11:53 a.m. today but then it takes a while to come back down as well so when we're talking about these bigger planets, the planets that are further out from us uh, being kind of highlighting each other, that means it takes a while. And, and we're talking about longer, slower sort of things. So, so it's not uh, a bad thing. When Jupiter forms a sextile with Saturn, sextiles in astrology are said to bring an opportunity 
that requires some work on your part in order to, for it to come to fruition. Now, just as a reminder, and I covered this again in last uh, week, but I wanna just sort of touch on this and review in case if you didn't see that um, uh, recording. On Saturday, Saturn turned retrograde. So it's a little bumpy. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's like totally amazing, like Jupiter sextile Saturn. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good transit. Um, the sextile again, bringing something to the table, something that we have to act on and something that we have to, you know, uh, sort of do. Now, if you're liking this post, go ahead and like it because uh, that will also get the algorithm rolling. Uh, give me some hearts and give me some likes so that you guys, uh, we can get the word out and people will know that we're alive here. Um, but basically, that what this is, is that this can bring uh, sort of something to the table. And we just also had the new moon happen overnight between Saturday and Sunday in Gemini. We have a lot of Gemini energy. We have Mercury in Gemini, the sun in Gemini, the moon in Gemini. So there's a lot of multitasking going on and a lot of like options. Oh, choices. There's more options. Oh, there's another choice, you know? And so that could be a little confusing, okay? Uh, because the, sometimes the more uh, choices and options that we have, we think it'll be better, but sometimes it's actually more confusing. It's like, gosh, which one do I pick? So basically with Jupiter sextile Saturn, this helps us to realize a goal, a dream, an aspiration. Like you, if you got downloaded this weekend with any kind of a dream, while you were sleeping, first of all, how did everybody do with that new moon? Did you guys uh, have like, was it positive for you? Was it hard to sleep? Some people, I, I do feel like new moons and full moons are like the two most powerful points. Definitely full moon is the, you know, kind of a little bit harder to deal with than the new moon. But even so, the new moon's a lot of energy because remember, it's a laser beam of energy. It's sun, moon in the same sign and then throw mercury in there too is in the same sign. So we had a lot of energy coming at us. So sometimes we have trouble falling asleep or I personally, personally heard from so many people this weekend. Gemini is the sign of like friendships and networking and social. I heard from so many people this weekend. Some people I are regulars and some people uh, I haven't heard from in a long time. People texting and calling and messaging and all that. It was very busy uh, feeling uh, in that weekend. So basically what the deal is we got downloaded with a lot of information maybe even information overload with that new moon. Uh, then Saturn Saturn was retrograde. And then, and then now we're into this Jupiter-Saturn thing. So this is really, even though it's a lot of energy, it's a laser beam of energy, and it's like a lot of stuff going on at the same time. Hey, Gloria Cancer in Florida, welcome. We have a couple Flor Floridians here. Um, and so, but even though it's a lot of energy, it, we could, I mean, there could be some real good stuff coming from it. It could just be tiring, a little taxing on our nervous system, kind of making us feel a little wonked out or glitchy, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So Jupiter sextile Saturn can help us to realize our goals, realize our dreams. And here's the thing, Saturn initially when it's retrograde, it's like, it's like sort of all of a sudden it'll be it'll be expanding and then it's like contracting. So basically what the deal is with Saturn, and I'm talking about the feeling of it, it the planet doesn't literally do that, but it's the feeling of a contraction. So the reason why I like Saturn retrograde, even though Saturn retrograde isn't super fun. I don't think I don't think the keyword fun is ever associated with Saturn, just to let you guys know. <laughs> um, but one of the good aspects of it's what is wasting your time what is uh no longer serving you what's what is a time waster what is something uh that you're wasting money resources time energy effort if it's a waste of your time effort energy and resources time to get rid of it and that's what saturn retrograde helps us to do saturn remember when i said it's more of like a contracting kind of feeling well it's like it's like we might have put so much on our plate and especially with this Jupiter thing, like we want to put more on our plate, but sometimes we have to let something go. And so I heard recently, and I'm going to paraphrase this, I'm not exactly sure of the exact quote, but it was something like, whenever I say yes to something, I'm saying no to all of these other things. And the reason why I love that quote is because it really, 
I, I love how it really like that's perfect for Saturn and retrograde just saying but also because it reminds us that we have finite time like you know we're only a week certain amount of hours per day and we're human beings and so I love that we are now looking at what am I gonna if I'm saying yes to this that means I'm saying no to all these other things so this thing here has to be important it has to mean something to me has to be worth my while, worth my time, worth my effort, worth worth my energy. And so that's what we're looking at. And Jupiter wants to make everything big, wants to blow everything up and make it big and large and, and bring more to the plate, like I said. But Saturn right now is like, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not, we're not adding any more to the plate. We are going to uh, clean the things off of our plate and get rid of whatever's like leftover or excessive or whatever. So this is quite good. I mean, I think that like when we're looking at our time, effort, energy, and resources being finite, then where do you want to put your, your effort and your, your energy? Jupiter is a large dream, a goal, an aspiration. And in Taurus, we're definitely talking about money here. Um, so, I mean, that can be what, what's going to help us make more money. What's going to help us with our resources, with our, with our, um, you know, bottom line, you know, I mean, that's very, very Jupiter and Taurus. And then Saturn and Pisces also wants to have a deeper meaning associated, like what, whatever comes to us during these next two to three weeks, this is a long one. Okay. So it's already been active, you know, for the last couple of weeks and it will keep being active until like really next week. So when we're looking around and we're experiencing our life and our day, what uh, what opportunity is coming? Pay attention, open your eyes and look because other people might be so busy and so overwhelmed by all this energy, they might not realize that there is a golden nugget sitting right in front of them. Uh, but remember, Saturn just wants to ask, is that <laughs> is that going to waste your time or is it do you have enough time for this? You know, Saturn's gonna double check and ask those questions. And that's a good thing. I mean, I think sometimes we always have to take a reevaluation of that. In fact, uh, Saturn is, we call Saturn many nicknames in astrology. One of the nicknames is Big Daddy Saturn, but the other one, he's Father Time. He's associated with being Father Time. So do you have enough time? You know, and many of us are really stretched with our time. So what can you kind of cut back on, you know, and especially if Jupiter's here going, but there's all these other things, there's all these other options. Uh, in order to say yes to something, we might have to say no to something else. So what we have to kind of balance and, and that's a little tricky, but there could be a golden nugget in all of this where we get a little extra boost, especially helping us in a financial way. So think about finance, but also think about Saturn's uh, in Pisces. It has to mean something to us. There has to be a deeper hidden meaning that, that we feel with, with uh, Pisces likes to have a, some kind of a spiritual connection or spiritual payoff uh, to do things. Pisces likes to uh, do things for the greater good or for, for um, a higher purpose. Think of your higher self, uh, you can call it God consciousness. You can call it, you know, angels, whatever you want to call it. But it's like, we have to have a deeper connection. Um, and that's what Saturn and Pisces really likes. So that's happening. Like I said today, the peak of it's today, but really it's going to be still active all week. So keep that in mind and, and remember to be on the lookout because like I said, other people might be overwhelmed right now because there's so much planetary energy going on and there's so much pulling us, especially with all this high speed, you know, multi dimensional Gemini going on that, that they might miss what you, because you watch the broadcast, you will be able to gain. See, so that's a good thing. Now there is a darkness going on behind the scenes. And if you're feeling that and you're like, well, this feels so light and fluffy, but I'm not feeling that way. This is the reason why tomorrow on June 20th, 2023, lovely Lilith, black moon Lilith is going to form a conjunction with Mars. Those two, I really don't want them to hang out at all, <laughs> ever. Um, black moon Lilith, in case if any of you have never heard of her, Lilith, uh, we call her Lilith uh, for short. Uh, Lilith is said to be the dark side of the moon. So the side of the moon that we can't see, that's represented by dark moon Lilith. Um, and so she's dark. You know, I compare her, uh, if you guys know about Pluto being very like 
you know, Hades, the Lord of the Underworld. I always call her as a nickname, Mrs. Pluto, because I feel like she's Pluto, but not quite as bad. You know, like if Pluto is a forest fire, Lilith is like a bonfire, you know what I mean? But Lilith can make us feel dark sometimes and being conjunct Mars, the God of War, yikes, those two could really get into some combativeness. And the peak of that is gonna be tomorrow night at 9.31 p.m. Eastern time, 6.31 p.m. if you're out on the west coast of the United States. So, so Lilith conjunct Pluto is kind of mm, not so good. And all of that is taking place in Leo. And Leo is a hothead. Leo is a fire sign. And so ego, <laughs> egos might be around with, especially with Leo. Leo can be uh, a little bit egotistical. So if you are a Leo, if you know a Leo, um, if you have Leo in your chart, like your rising, your moon, you know, Mars, whatever, you're going to be feeling this extra. And it might feel a little dark. Again, these two, this is gonna be active all week as well, kind of behind the scenes, but these two are not quite as powerful. Like if I was rating them, the Saturn, the Saturn um, sextile Jupiter one is the most like uh, important one of this whole month. So if you look at it that way, it kind of like the rating is a little lower, but it's still powerful. And, and it can make us feel just a little bit dark or a little bit sad or glum or blue or, or just like, you know, kind of dark thoughts that can be because that's, that's, you know, Lilith, it can be quite dark. Um, she often kind of, I have, I've had a lot of uh, clients say that she makes them in a bad mood. So um, again, that the peak of that is tomorrow. And I like to say, having awareness of these things, because sometimes we feel crazy. Sometimes we feel like, oh God, what is wrong with me? There's nothing in my life going wrong. Everything's going fine and I still feel bad. You know, sometimes these planets give us this like sort of um, flavor in the background, if you will. And so if you're predisposed to feeling down, blue or depressed, that's why, you know, she, she can really tip those scales, Miss Lilith. You know, she can really, you know, get us to go into a down feeling direction. So. So just know that she's around and, you know, she's going to be passionate. Mars is passionate. She's passionate. So everybody's passionate <laughs> about something, um, which is not a bad thing. But sometimes people get too passionate, right? And then that can tip into anger and it can tip into aggression and jealousy and all kinds of things. Again, not as fun. Um, but it's good to have the awareness that she's around and that she's active and she's activating the God of War. So now he's all angry and irritated by her and <laughs> those two are not, not getting along right now. They're, they're conjunct, they're on top of each other. So it might be too much, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, having two Tasmanian devils locked inside of a little tiny cage, you know, <laughs> probably only one of them is going to come out alive. You know I mean? Like that's that type of energy. So um, luckily we are moving into, we're having the summer solstice. Okay. And that is coming on June 21st, 2023. Yay. We're, and that is also welcome to cancer season. So we're moving into the astrological sign of cancer. The sun moves into cancer. That's how we know that we're going into the summer solstice. Again, people will be saying, I don't use astrology. I'm like, but you do because that's what we're celebrating here is the is the arrival of summer the, the when it's official is 10:58 a.m. eastern time so earlier than that 7:58 a.m. if you're on the west coast um, and so sun moving into cancer it's also the longest day of the year in the northern hemisphere um, the shortest day in the southern hemisphere that's what the solstices are the, just so that you guys know what is the difference between solstice and equinox uh, the solstice is the longest and shortest days and the equinox uh, times are equal light Okay, so they're, they're the days where it's like 12 and 12, you know, hours of light and dark. Okay, so, or whatever it is. It's like, so it's equal light, equal dark. Uh, that's the equinoxes, and that's the spring equinox and the fall equinox. The solstices are summer and winter. And so, and that's the longest and the shortest days. So that's how you kind of can figure out what the difference is between the two. So we're in the Northern Hemisphere, again, if you're watching this in the Southern Hemisphere, this is your shortest day of the year. So the sun is moving into the astrological sign of 
cancer. Home and family, home and family, home and family. Cancer is the ruler of the fourth house in your astrological zodiac chart, okay? And so basically, that is a big, huge deal. A lot of people, you know, I mean, that's the time, summertime, you know, we're going to be planting, you know, and and getting uh, lots of fruits and vegetables and all kinds of things. It's always a time of celebration. It's fertility, it's planting, it's all that kind of stuff. Um so where does cancer fall in your astrological chart? And you'll know how this affects you on a personal level. Like what area, what house is cancer the ruler of? If you are a cancer like Gloria from Florida, who is tuning in here, or if you have a cancer rising sign, or if you have a cancer moon sign, you will be feeling this energy um, if you have planets there. I personally don't really have many planets in cancer, um, but I still feel it um, in, in, the, in the fact that it's in a certain area of my chart see so you have to know what area it is if anybody of you knows what area cancer is in your astrological chart post below now if you don't know that and you're like well I don't really know my chart very well how do you feel this time of year and this is June 21st all the way until July 21st how do you usually feel between that time because the plant the every year the Sun goes through that zone in your astrological chart during that little phase, and then you'll know how you feel during that, or how do you interact with cancers? People who you know are are cancers. Um, in you know, how do you interact with them? How do what do they mean to you? Are they your besties? Are they your frenemies? Are they you know who are they in your life? And then you'll know how that affects you. Uh, Wendy posted eleventh house. Okay, so that's your area of friendships and groups of people. So this could be potentially a busy time for you socially, a busy time. Um, it's also the area of causes too. So like you might pick up a cause or you might see a lot of people during this time, uh, hang out with barbecues and all kinds of things. Um, uh, let's see, Andrea said cancer rising. Okay. Yeah. So that's your, your rising sign and your first house. Um, Almir, uh, yes, cancer rising too. So it's the same thing. So, so the rising sign in the first house is all about number one first it's the self so that can often feel really good uh to a person um because it's like rebirth you know new new you new new astrological sort of thing and so if that is a case that could be in a really good area of your chart oh debbie you are also cancer rising too you have a lot of cancer risings on the broadcast tonight all the self-love that's exactly right almir said all the self-love exactly so um that is something that's very important and uh, really good for us to know where these things are. Um, and again, if you want to have a personalized astrological session, just give me a shout. Um, let's see. <laughs> Liz, you are kind of an honorary cancer. Where is cancer though in your, I know you have a lot of fourth house, but where is it? Uh, Rita said, all she knows is it's hot outside. Okay, well, there you go. And, and but cancer might be uh, in, in a weird area for you. And so that might be uh, something that you uh, need to know. So so that is that is a good thing to know and to experience. Uh, and I, I'm not really talking about temperature, even though, yes, temperature can affect our mood. But like, where is it? What's it interacting with? What's it going on? Rita, I happen to know that cancer is where your Mars is. So that can be irritating, right? I just said Mars is the god of war. So you could feel a little rawr, grumpy and, you know, cancer's, cancer's more like this, right? Cancer the crab uh, is more about pinching and claws and all kinds of different things. Um, so this is the time to celebrate that we have the light. And now from this point on, we are losing light until we get to winter uh, uh, time and then we start to gain light again. So this is the time where we are celebrating. We're having we're having um, the the summer. We're feeling good, and again in the northern hemisphere of the world, um, this is all about our feelings and our emotions. Uh, cancer is a cardinal sign, the leader in <laughs> in all of the water signs. So you know, there's many water signs. Uh, uh, as far as there's other water signs, uh, Scorpio and Pisces. Cancer is the leader, the head of the boss, okay, of all the water signs. And so 
it's the leader in the feelings uh, arena. If you think of water is always feelings and emotions, feeling vulnerable, feeling sensitive. You know, those crabs have to be very protected, you know. Um, it's, if, it's interesting if you think of all the water signs, the crabs, right, they got the shell, they have the claws, then the scorpion has the shell, the claws, and the stinger, and then the fish, the elusive Pisces fish that kind of just swim away into the dark abyss. You can't see them. That's the, that's Pisces sort of superpower. They can just disappear. So um, uh, if you think of all of them, if you think about them being vulnerable and emotional and sensitive, they also have to have some sort of built-in guard or some sort of built-in escape route, okay? Because sometimes all of that vulnerability and all that sensitivity can be too much for them internally. I'm just going to say this. I do know some cancers that are kind of jerky, you know, that are not nice. You know, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily sensitive to you. They're sensitive in themselves, okay? So there's that's the difference, okay? Um, I know some some cancers that are a little bit sharp and pointy um and it's kind of like well i just got you and then you have to deal with your own self you know kind of thing uh so i think a lot of people will say well i know some cancers and they're not very sensitive well they are sensitive themselves um and that's sort of the difference now there are a lot of empathic uh cancers that are very sensitive to others um uh and and of course that's a more highly evolved cancer is more empathic more hsp highly sensitive person uh, very intuitive. A lot of cancers are extremely intuitive and very, like I said, empathic. They can feel other people's feelings and emotions. So this is a time when we're feeling the feels. So if you are a cancer or yeah, Pisces or Scorpio, you're going to be extra watery. Okay. Right now. Um, if you're an earth sign, you could also feel the benefit because water and earth are complementary elements. So if you are Virgo or if you are Taurus, you'll feel this, but um, uh, here's, what did I say? Virgo Taurus. Oh, and then Capricorn is the opposite of cancer. So can Capricorns are the ones that kind of get stressed during cancer season, because remember that's the opposing sign. So even though cancer, uh, Capricorn is an, a wa an earth sign and cancer is a water sign that's complementary, they are opposite of each other on the astrological wheel. And those, so that can be a little stressful if you are a Capricorn, uh, Melinda, I think you said you're a Capricorn. Anybody else Capricorn out there? Um, and so that can be why it can feel a little bit more stressful during that time. I'm curious, Almir, I'm sort of putting you on the spot, but Almir, you're so good at rituals and different things. Uh, I'm wondering if you do any particular ritual that you like. Um, if you want to post below, that would be wonderful. Um, you're very good at that. Um, I would definitely say bringing in fl fresh flowers and eating really crisp, wonderful salads um, and all of that kind of stuff, self-care wise, bringing the outside in and just really honoring, uh, you know, Mother Nature and all of that stuff. I think that would be good. Rosalie, yeah, you're a Capricorn in Burlington. So how do you feel during this time of year? This is your opposite time of the year. Uh, so everybody has one. Everybody has an opposite time. And so that's basically what the deal is is fire signs get more I think a little stress during during uh, cancer season uh, because remember water puts out fire so if you're like an Aries or uh, Leo or Sagittarius you might be feeling like eh, a little bit unless you have water in your chart like I'm an Aries with a Pisces moon so I can kind of hang in both arenas uh, it's just sometimes when it, it can like tip the scales a little <laughs> Um, so that is again happening at 1058 AM Eastern time earlier than that, if you're on the West coast. Now I don't have any, um, representation of this tonight. I couldn't find my pearls, but pearls and also rubies are something, uh, two stones that are very good for the astrological sign of cancer. Um, and so ruby and I don't have a ruby with me and I don't have pearls with me, but that's, those are the two, um, stones that are very good. If you want to kind of contemplate or sit with or become more cancerian, definitely, I would say moonstone, moonstone. Now moon is the ruler of cancer. Uh, and so moon, right. Can we, can be like, kind of goes up and it goes down and it's like strong and it's not. So if any of you out there have cancer in your chart, 
you that is the ruler of cancer that's going to be that's the planet that rules you so sometimes cancers are really affected by the moon cycles and they'll, they'll be like oh my gosh like what is the moon doing so that can be why rosalie ding 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 thank you she sent me 50 stars i appreciate it if you guys want to send stars during the broadcast that's awesome or after the broadcast is over you can send them it's like a way of giving a little tip it's it's um it's kind of fun too <laughs> so thank you very much i really appreciate it wendy better late than never she said she's from vermont aquarius that's awesome love that um yes uh so almir said i always honor my patron goddess Gaia with flowers and leaving earth-friendly offerings, i.e. seeds for birds, donating to the Humane Society, etc. A big fo focus goes on nature and animals. I love that, Almir. And that is so true. I feel like, you know, like I said, bringing fresh flowers in and, and sort of having really good uh, salads and different things, but also, yes, honoring. And I, um, one year for, I didn't have it with me today, but one year for my broadcast, uh, I talked about like this bracelet that you could donate. Um, like if you purchase the bracelet, it like helped uh, the oceans. Cause if you think of the crab, that is water. We have a little drama kind of um, unfolding right now in, um, in the waters uh, where there was a submarine that went missing who was um, supposedly looking at uh, the Titanic. It was a submarine for very wealthy people that could go down under the ocean and view the Titanic's remains and, and uh, the wreck uh, that it left behind. And now it's missing and there's this huge search for it going on and i guess one of the members uh is actually a billionaire um and he's they're missing so i hope i hope they are recovered uh, but when we think of the ocean that's mysterious and dark and all the things that we can offer i i do think there's a big connection with cancer and the water and ocean and we could feel really good uh or being around the water you know if you think about again in the northern hemisphere of the world here this is a time we like to go swimming go to the lake, go to the ocean, going to the beach, all those types of things. Uh, Melinda said, yeah, Cancer Moon for you. So yeah, you you might be feeling this and it'll be extra emotional for you because it's in your moon sign. That's a very strong moon sign for sure. Um, so yeah, Almir, I love that uh, donating money to the Humane Society or whatever. Um, and like I said, I, I showed a bracelet one year where you could donate money for ocean cleanup of plastics and yucky stuff like that. So I, I do feel like that's a wonderful um, sort of thing to do is to give back uh, during cancer season. Cooking is a really big thing with cancers. Uh, cancers love, a lot of cancers I know love to cook. I always say cooking as a hobby or, you know, eating meals uh, is a Cancerian thing too. So so again, I think lots of fresh fruits and vegetables and, and colors on the plate is very good for um, cancer season. Um, and so during the day of cancer season, there's going to be a special thing that happens. So uh, pay attention, sky watchers. If anybody's out there as a sky watcher, um, that night and actually even starting on the 20th into the 21st, there's going to be the crescent moon because remember the moon was just new this weekend. So it's like a tiny little sliver of a moon and it's going to be in between Venus and Mars in the sky. So it's going to be um, a, a little like strip of them and they're all going to be lined up in the sky. So that'll be really cool. Hopefully we will not have clouds and we can see this uh, astro astronomical phenomena happening. Um, but it, they're going to be aligned and the crescent moon is going to be the creamy, delicious center of the Oreo cookie in between Venus and Mars. So it's going to be really beautiful. So I'm hoping to see lots of really good um, photographs and things like that that night. But that's a special event. And the fact that they're all going to be lined up uh, in the sky. So uh, that'll be between June 20th and June 21st. So hopefully we can get out there and look. But remember, cancer season is going to be the whole month. So we call these seasons now, but it's really, it's 
like I said, June 21st to July 21st. And so the whole month, we're going to really be feeling uh, this Cancerian lens. And then eventually all the rest of the planets will start to kind of move into that direction. I don't want to say all the rest, but you know, the personal planets like Mercury and everybody else will start to kind of move into that direction and we'll move in out of, out of Gemini season into Cancer season. It's definitely Gemini season is very much more like kind of chaotic and a little bit like a lot of like I said you know in the last month or so what happens during that time well it's it is gay pride um uh in June um it's also a lot of graduating and a lot of people running around and and going to proms and photo shoots and gotta get ready for the graduation party like all these things so it can be a little bit of a chaotic time father's day is in there that now juneteenth is in there so there's there's um a lot of happening in the in so when we get to cancer time it really is a little bit more about connecting with yourself your feelings in going inward you know the crab is not real extroverted it's a more inward sort of sign so it's about really connecting to your feelings and your emotions and even resting you know i mean um uh cancer season is good for that you know i mean like laying on the beach and you know having <laughs> having a little mocktail or cocktail whatever your deal is but but yeah i mean i think that i think this is a time to really get in touch with our feelings remember it's home and family home and family so it's all things domestic it's like cleaning up around the house and, you know, mowing the lawn and doing like different house projects or whatever. It's all about beautifying your home, beautifying Mother Earth, all of those things that we can do during cancer time. So I think it's lovely and beautiful. So um, and another thing that is coming uh, also that day, Mercury is going to form a sextile with Mars. Now, if you remember, Mercury formed a sextile with Venus on Saturday. Um, so that's that is a good thing uh on the 17th okay and so then on on wednesday mercury is going to form a sextile with mars so so remember venus is the goddess of love and beauty that was on saturday and now mars is sexy sexy passion and that's going to be also on that same day june 21st 2023 so it's it's a wonderful thing um you know uh definitely um and then the other thing piece of this is um kelly said venus uh, cancer venus and Mar mars is in leo um yeah so we we have to uh <laughs> we'll have to talk about that um and then okay so anyway so as we get into um thursday and friday there's a ton of energy i don't have the ability to uh, oh, you said in your natal birth chart. I got it. I don't have the ability to um, go over every single thing that's happening in on Thursday and Friday because it's just going to be too long and we'll be here all night. Uh, but what's happening is Juno, the goddess of love and beauty, um, she is the goddess that is in charge of our who our ideal marriage partner is. So, so if you think of Venus. Venus is romance and sensuality and Juno is also romance, but she's who, who am I getting married to? Okay. Juno is, is who, and she's moving into cancer too. So, and that's going to happen at 741 AM Eastern time on Thursday. So this is a new thing for, for Juno. Juno has been moving through Gemini all this time. Now Juno is going to be in cancer. Well, how do you find your ideal marriage partner if you're home, right? Home and family. I just said cancer's home and family. So now we have Juno, the goddess, looking for her husband. I mean, so that's basically a big deal. Um, and I can talk more about that at another time. But but I do feel like that uh, can help us. So um, I always say if you're single and you're really looking for a partner, like ask people that are in your inner circle um you know do you know anybody does does your you know wife have a sister or your husband have a brother or whatever you know like like kind of ask because you know that can still happen it can still happen close to home see where I'm going with that Juno is an our ideal marriage partner so so that'll be in Cancer Vesta same day is moving into Taurus. So Vesta is our safety. How do we feel safe? Well, in Taurus, she's finances for sure. And that happens at 2.18 p.m. on Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. That's the same day. So you can see there's a lot going on. But the big deal 
that's really uh, a nice big deal that's going on is um, between June 22nd and June 23rd, uh, the sun is going to form a sextile with the north node of the moon. That's wonderful. So the sun now is in Cancer, right? At this point on Thursday and Friday, it's sun's in Cancer. Well, it's a water sign forming a sextile with the north node of the moon, which is in Taurus. So Cancer and Taurus are highlighting each other, and that can bring opportunity. Remember, the north node of the moon is our destiny, what we're meant to do here in this lifetime. What, we're, what, what, what are our goals? What are our dreams? Do you see how I keep saying this? Even, even when I'm talking about Jupiter sextile Saturn earlier in the week. What are your goals? What are your aspirations? Well, the North Node of the Moon is what are you meant to do while you're here, you know, on this planet in this lifetime? And so with the sun forming a sextile with that, I think that's going to be a wonderful time. And then if you think about it, the sun's also going to be forming a trine with the South Node of the Moon in Scorpio. So, so there's, there's potentially a big past life portal. I call these portals uh open opening on thursday and friday so some benefit though this is a fun thing this is a positive thing something beneficial from a past life i always feel like we give ourselves like little nuggets from past lives you know um let's say you ever hear people that kind of go what the heck? I'm always doing nice thing for others. Nobody does anything nice for me. You ever hear people say that? Or maybe you even said it or felt it, right? Well, I feel like those little times that you've done all those things for people or situate, I feel like it's karma that just builds in your karma bank account, you know? And then it's sprinkled throughout the life that you might get the karmic payback, but you also might get it in another life. Um, and so maybe you're like, gosh, I never see any results from this. And I'm just giving and giving and nobody loves me, you know, that kind of thing. Cancel clear on that because maybe in the next life you're, you're harvesting from that. So I feel like when these things happen, these little nuggets, these little tidbits, like it could be something very, very beneficial. And so, uh, Wendy said she has North node, uh, in Taurus. See, so you're going to be feeling this. Um, so if you are a Taurus, if you are a cancer, or if you're Scorpio, you're going to be feeling this Scorpio is the past life. Like what was going on? And that's water, water, and then earth. So I feel like this is very, something very beneficial. And again, it's going to be active all through um, the peak of it. The, again, the peak of it. So we have this really big thing peaking on Monday. And then we have this really big thing peaking on, on uh, Thursday and Friday. And again, what are sextiles? Opportunity that you get. You might, it might require some work on your part. Like it's like, uh, you know, someone's like, hey, here's this really expensive car, but it needs a new battery. Okay, great. Like I'm going to put a new battery in the really expensive car that you're giving me for free. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like, there's an opportunity here. You might have to work and you might have to do it. Uh, but it's good. So, so this is really active this whole week. So that can be beneficial and positive. So be on the lookout for what opportunity is coming your way. If somebody's like, Hey, I have this idea. Let's do this and this. I want you to, this is the time to pick up and run with it. But just remember Saturn's in the background asking, do you really have time for all of that? You know? <laughs> and so that's something that we have to kind of keep in mind. Um, uh, Phyllis, yay. Welcome. Yes, exactly. June 22nd to 23rd, you're a Scorpio. So you're going to be getting that download. What past life karmic thing, little special nugget. Look, it doesn't even have to be past life. It could be from your past where you put a little bit of karma in your good, good karma account. And then cha-ching, we're getting, somebody's giving you a favor. So it could be a little thing like, hey, I'll give you a ride to the airport, you know, or whatever. Or it could be a big thing where it's a business opportunity or something that you want to expand on in your life. Again, where is Scorpio? Where is Taurus? Where is Cancer in your astrological chart? And you'll know how, how that'll affect you on a personal level. But I would just say, keep your eyes open for opportunity. That is what we're looking for this week. Actually, I think this week you could nickname opportunity. Um, so I think that that would be a really good thing. Uh, Wendy said her North nodes and Leo C. I love that you guys know these things. I think that's fantastic. Now, 
The only other thing that's going to be happening is on Sunday, uh, Mercury is going to form a square with Neptune. That's 636 p.m. Uh, where last Sunday, the sun formed a square with Neptune. Now Mercury is forming a square with Neptune on Sunday, the 25th, 636 p.m. Oh, that's not a, it's not a huge deal. It's just you have to watch with Neptune for somebody lying, somebody stretching the truth, make sure you read the dotted line, make sure you read all the fine details. That can be this type of thing. Uh, it can be a very intuitive time, but it can also be a time where, or even just a not even a lie, but maybe just like you misunderstood somebody and that's on Sunday. So having a big talk on Sunday, signing a, a legal contract on Sunday, no, 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 we don't wanna do that. Um, so you wanna wait until that one passes before you sign on the dotted line because you want to be able to have clarity. That's not really clarity. Uh, Mercury square Neptune is not really clarity. So that's something that we have to kind of keep in mind. Mercury at that time on Sunday is going to be still be in, in uh, Gemini and Neptune is in Pisces. Pisces and Gemini are square each other. Um, Mercury likes to talk, 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 talk. And then Neptune's like talking in riddles, you know, I mean, so, so that can be a little bit, um, Kelly said daughter's graduation party Sunday. See, really it's better for a party. You know what I mean? That that would be like, it's in other words, you don't wanna do like accounting on Sunday or or some little detailed thing on Sunday. That's not like, that's not really uh, the thing. So again, the peak of it is gonna be on Sunday at 6.36 p.m. Eastern time. So 3.36 p.m. if you're on the West Coast. Um, it'll start to dissipate pretty quickly. It's only act active like a day or two, uh, Sunday into Monday, uh, even Saturday, uh, we could feel that. It's it's not really a long one, but it is one that's a little tricky and it can make us feel tired. We can forget things. Like if you're going to the party, it's like, oh, dang, I forgot the cups, you know, like whatever you're supposed to bring. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's like, if, well, think about how did you feel on Sunday? Because the sun squared Neptune yesterday. Um, and so I was a little, I would say on Sunday, I felt a little spacey. I felt very tired on Sunday. Um, and it could have been from the new moon. It could also be from the sun squared Neptune. I always think Neptune transits make us feel a little like out of it and kind of lazy. <laughs> so, so if you're going to the party or your big thing that weekend is to lay in the hammock, Yay, that would be perfect for that time. Um, and then I will just say this on Monday, I'm gonna see you next Monday night, but Mercury is gonna be moving into Cancer the next day. Uh, so see, the planets are starting to move on from Gemini and they're moving into Cancer. Um, and so that's a wonderful thing. So we have a lot of astrological energy uh, downloaded and, and uh, going on this week, but I would say look for the opportunity that's this week where's the opportunity, what's going on, look for all the little hidden benefits, the gems, anything that comes across your, your, just think about it. You might have to do some work. It's okay. It's okay. We can do a little work. We can put a little, little, you know, touch on that. Uh, but it would be something that can be very beneficial and could pay off in a big way. So I hope that helps everybody. Um, if anybody has any questions for me, I have a few minutes to take some questions. And then also I will pull one collective card. You know, I always bring my cards uh, in order to go over, um, uh, you know, what the angels want us to know this week. So what questions does anybody have? If any, I might pull one or two. Um, yeah, Kelly said there's, uh, you don't gain things without effort. Of course, of course. You have to put a little effort in. Um, but it's it's like a positive thing though. I mean, we really could uh, could end up having uh, quite the benefit from from these astrological things. Sun, the sun sextile north node. I mean, that's a good one. The sun is solar power, so that's that's a good positive thing. Um, <laughs> oh, thank you, Andrea. Ding ding ding. Andrea sent a hundred stars. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, it's, it's a fun thing. <laughs> um, I should have a little bell here. Um, <laughs> yay. Uh, Spiderworks Art. That's a cool, that's a cool name. Uh, I almost caught you live for five minutes. Awesome. That's great. Wendy, I have three large house projects that, um, uh, could you pull a card please? Well, this is cancer season, Wendy. This is the time to do that. Uh, get some house projects going on. What does uh, Wendy need to know about her house projects? 
Ooh, girl, you're overwhelmed. Um, did somebody say that they were going to do something for you, Wendy? Like was one of the house projects, let, let's say, I'm just going to use this as an example. Like, let's say it was like they promised to paint and then they, then they never showed up or I don't know. I feel like there's some kind of a thing that somebody dropped the ball, forgive and forget on this house, on at least one of the house projects. Um, something was supposed to happen and then it didn't, and it didn't work out or the contractor couldn't come or there wasn't enough supply or blah, blah, blah. There was like something, um, <laughs> something feels like funky with it. Wendy said, no. Okay. Well, I want you to think, cause there's some kind of thing there that I feel. And then, and then here's the thing, Wendy, if it hasn't happened, it might, might be happening. Okay. I'm just saying sometimes it hasn't happened by the time of the broadcast, but it's something that's coming in the future. I, uh, so I'm sorry to say that. So, uh, in other words, there could be something that starts, um, person drops the ball. You just have to move on from it. It feels like it's something that, and obviously, um, get receipts and get things in writing and all that kind of stuff. Um, like it could be something dumb. Like you want to have like, uh, you know, you need, you got two cans of paint and then you went to back to the third and then they discontinued the color or something like that. And then you're like, Oh, dang it. You know, I have to, I have to, uh, you know, do that. So there's a forgive and forget. And then even when I switch cards, Wendy, you get this card, try, try again, and you will succeed. So see, there's something there that you have to try. That word try means, you know, you're going to have to kind of kind of do that. Uh, Wendy said so much happening, no signed contracts or, oh, okay. I gotcha. Yeah. So you might have to do that, Wendy. You might have to like, cause I feel like there's a letdown here. Um, maybe you had no, you said no, uh, money help there. Maybe that's why you're, you're, um, needing to forgive and forget, but there feels like there's something, but I will say this, try, try again and you will succeed. It means you have to just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. So I hope that helps. It means that you have there's some struggle there. Um, yeah. Sorry, girl. But it's not, I don't feel like it's, the scepter card, look, the kings, queens, knights got the scepter card for a battle that was fought, but won. The battle was won, like victorious, you, you know, but it just means there was a battle. So you had to fight. You had to like get in there and, you know, so, so that's what that means. Um, thank you, Kelly. You love your collective cards and my bell idea. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, Debbie, it's always time to get rid of a toxic relationship. There, there's no, there's no, uh, bad time to get rid of a toxic relationship. I'm going to pull a card for you though. Um, Wendy, I, uh, Debbie, I know that, um, that's rough. It's heavy. That's a heavy, that feels heavy to me. Yeah. Oh girl, look at that. Woo, Debbie, look at this. Debbie said, is this a good time to get rid of a toxic relationship? Choose friends wisely. Yeah, this one's, that one says it all. You know, you're not having a good, someone's not your friend. You know, it's like a, what did I say earlier, a friend of me, you know, someone that's nice to your face, but behind your back is doing all kinds of not so good things. See, um, I feel like as if, um, there does feel like there's a, a commitment here, like a joint, it could be a joint business, a joint monetary thing, a joint house, like some kind of a thing where like, I feel like you're, it's like, if you leave that, then you have leave the, the ex or the, <laughs> the current, uh, toxic person, then you have to leave that other thing or like it has to be figured out in some way. Um, it's, so it's like a complicated thing. It's not like you can just, I can be like, Oh yeah, break up. And then you're just like, bah, you know, uh, it feels like there's complicated stuff there, Debbie. So, um, but I would say, I would say, yeah, I mean, it's like, it's kind of like you have to rip the bandaid off Debbie. That's what it feels like to me. Yeah. Oh, this is so, this is so hard. This is the, like, if you look if you look at this child hand in this big authoritative hand, like someone's ruling your life here. This is someone that's like telling you what to do, where to go, how to be like, and you might feel powerless in this situation. The child's hand is an indication of feeling powerless. I call this the rules and regulations card because it's like someone else or something else feels heavy and oppressive. Um, 
you didn't get any any of those cards are, are um, not showing that this that this relationship is very positive for you. I'll just say that. So I'm sorry. I hope that helps. But this is the new moon time, new moon to full moon. Uh, you know, you could be starting something new, bringing something new into your life. You know, remember in Saturn retrograde is getting rid of what doesn't serve us anymore. What's, you know, like pulling our time, energy and resources that can be good for Saturn retrograde. It's one of the good things about that. I hope that helps. Oh, okay. You're, no, your brother is helping you making, uh, but you must make decisions. Yeah, well, that's good. It's good you have the help. That's wonderful. Spiderworks said, had a birthday on Saturday. Happy birthday, Spiderworks. If everybody in the Monday night community want to wanna wish Spiderworks a happy birthday, um, <laughs> um, that's good. Uh, you must be a Gemini. Uh, you had the big Gemini new moon also. Um, that's that's a good reboot in your chart as well. Let me see, Spiderworks. I'm going to pull a card for you as a birthday present for you. What is your... Okay. Uh, Spiderworks, you're getting correct your mistakes. I'm going to pull another card about your business. That was a um, reference to your business question. So I don't know. Maybe you like you should have put something online that you didn't or that you should have paid a bill but didn't, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, spider works. And you need to just kind of spend time creating uh, whatever it is you do for, for work there. If, if it is uh, your art, uh, it means you have to paint, you have to write, you have to spend some time alone behind the scenes. Sometimes this can also be the card of studying, but you have to like I feel like you have to kind of just get serious and hunker down and, and, and do the thing. Um, so I don't know if there's like a regret there or some kind of thing like that. She said, yes, for sure. Um, a lot of people are wishing her a happy birthday. Yay. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Debbie. Yeah. Your ex-husband came up twice. Yeah. That's, that's not good. That's not good. Okay. I hope that helps spider works. Um, uh, yeah. Yay. Okay. Um, oh, Amy said we are having a watch party. I love that. How many people are there? I, that's been coming a thing. I've had more people tell me that they're having watch parties at their house, uh, Gretchen watch party. So <laughs> thank you. Um, I should have a little bell for that one too. That's wonderful. Um, somebody else. Oh, Phyllis, your spirits are visiting. Let me ask about that. And then I'm going to pull a collective card. Oh, wow. You have six people. That's amazing. Well, hello, everybody. All right. So Phyllis, I'm going to pull a card about your dreams. What's the deal there? What's going on? What do the angels want you to know, Phyllis? The cards are very um, active. Learning experience regarding angels. Okay. Learning experience. Um, they're trying to teach you. They're trying to teach you something. They're trying to download you. They're teaching you with something. Um, uh, there might be a mother, somebody from your maternal side of the family, uh, grandma, mom, auntie, sister, somebody from the maternal side of the family trying to help you and, and to break through. Uh, Phyllis, I hope that helps. Um, Spiderworks said, definitely helpful and so true. My creative energy is sucked. No, no, no. No, remember this week is a great time for for uh, stuff. So I would just I feel um, I feel kind of like oh Wendy, you're having a watch party too. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> um, I, no spiderworks. I, I you know I feel like as if you need to put it out there. Sometimes the time when we think that we suck the most, we actually it's actually like a really creative time. So I would just kind of. Yeah, you're getting the card of healing with that question, spider work. So I feel like I feel like you are getting the healing so that you can get back into the groove. Yeah, Phyllis, unbelievable exactly. That's who's coming to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I could feel that. So you're having visitation dreams. That's a wonderful thing. Sometimes that's what happens. Our spirit guides will work with us while we're sleeping because it's like Hello, McFly, because we're not listening <laughs> during the day. So sometimes the spirit guides and our guardians and our spirit team, those who predeceased us, are going to come and help us surround us, surround our bed at night and, and work with us while we're sleeping. Hope that helps. 
Okay. All right. Well, hopefully, Wendy, you figure that out, but there is something coming. I'm just letting you know that's the heads up. <laughs> just the heads up. It's okay. It'll be fine. I feel like it's going to work out. So don't, you know, try, try again. You're going to succeed. You're going to, you're going to figure this out. Okay. So I'm going to pull one collective card. What do the angels, our spirit guides, our guardians want us to know about this week of opportunity? All this fun stuff that we have coming. What do we need to know? What's the opportunity that's coming our way? Um, accept what is and detach from drama. Okay, so I like this. Okay, detach from drama especially is that... Um, this is like, I feel like this is some of this Saturn trend influence coming in. Detach from drama is like, cut out what no longer works in your life. If you have a friend that's sucking the life out of you, if you have a toxic relationship, it's almost like a full moon, right? Like get rid of it. That's what Saturn retrograde is all about. Time, effort, energy, and resources because, because Saturn's trying to trim the fat and get rid of things. Um, and then if we accept what is, okay, you know, remember that wonderful quote from Maya Angelou, and I'm going to pull another card as well, um, except uh, it, it's, what is it? Um, uh, oh, it just slipped out of my mind. Um, believe somebody when they show you who they really are. Believe them, okay? And so accept what is. Accept that this is where we're at, okay? Wendy, you got house stuff to do. Spider works we have. You're going to have to get busy creating and, and all the things. And if we accept the reality, I really think a key word with Saturn is reality. You know, it's like the hard, cold truth, you know, that kind of thing. Then we can build from there. We can build from there. Okay. So I'm going to pull another card, collective card. What do we need to know? Um, what are the angels downloading us with? Yeah. And then see, there's the opportunity. Generosity. This is St. Nick. Okay. Literally St. Nicholas of Myra. Okay. Is that St. Nick, uh, otherwise known as Santa, you know, but St. Nick generosity. Okay. We're going to, we're going to be, cause remember once we trim the fat and get rid of the drama and get rid of what we don't want and get rid of all the stuff and accept where we are, then we can open up the door and go, okay, what do I want? What do I want in the future? What do I want? What, what can the universe bring to me? Cause remember there is, uh, you know, with this wonderful, all this energy coming, there's opportunity, but we're going to have to do some work, you know? Yes. Cleaning house and making space. Andrea, I love that. Kelly said, same here. Love that. Thank you. Love you guys too. Love you, Wendy Martin and all the wonderful people. If you guys want to send stars, you can. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am still trying to get a thousand subscribers, even though they just reduced it to 500 subscribers. I am still trying to get a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. That's my goal. That is my dream. That's my wonderful thing. So if you guys have already subscribed to me, I love you. And that's amazing. And if you want, go ahead and subscribe. Yay, Rosalie, another 50, <laughs> 50 stars. Thank you so much, you guys. It's wonderful. It's a little tip. It's a little wonderful thing. And if you guys want a personalized astrological session, please feel free to send me a text or send me a direct message. Um, and uh, we can go ahead and schedule that. They're very beneficial they're very helpful I've gotten tons of feedback that that really helps uh, to help you make decisions with your life help you have choices find clarity all those things so definitely wonderful <laughs> oh Rosalie she said her grandson wanted to send me stars well thank you so much you guys are amazing and uh, thank you for tuning in and I love all of you namaste have a wonderful week and next week on the broadcast I'm gonna ask what was your opportunity so make sure that you look out and write it down all right. Thanks, everybody. Bye.